Sunday, Sunday or Monday, <laughs> wherever you guys are in the world. I'm excited to get into today's energies. Hope you had a great weekend or having a beautiful Sunday. Um, yeah, potent, potent energy. Um, the last couple of readings have been so clear and so um, interconnected, which I love when we have certain frequencies coming into our, into the earth, into our bodies that it is showing this flow, if that makes sense, of how the energies are coming in to support us. So I'm guided again to work with the Starseed Oracle, and then we'll go even deeper with the Sovereign Vibrations Oracle deck. And it's funny because all of these readings have been really helpful for me as well, um, because writing a book to these cards that I've created has been a whole new process of creativity for me and working through the blocks around um, letting, I guess, go of perfectionism, trying to make it perfect. And because the guidebook's gonna be like this size, so I'm gonna have something similar to this layout. But of course you can see there's only a small description. So when I've channeled these cards, there is like, I could talk about each card for like a day, <laughs> a day long. There's so much coming through. And that's also why I'm very guided to make it a sound bath experience so that it also explains the story through the genetic codes or through the frequency codes. So, but yeah, again, like not micromanaging the process and flowing yet this, you know, it we're all learning new things and that's the beauty of creativity. We are always learning to master new things and it's such a journey, it's such a ride. <laughs> so let's see what energies are for here for us today, Sunday into Monday. Ooh, very strongly flew out. Oh, wow. We get the great serving. And I love it. It looks like a moon in the background as the sky. Mars energy, anger, conflict, softening to love. Are you guys feeling any anger? I know that through the frequencies that have come through, right? Or maybe are still hitting us when we're cracked open, when we're learning not to micromanage, we have to deal with anger. We have to deal with that old suppression of maybe even our authentic self. Um, and it anger is such an interesting emotion because a lot of the times, especially when we're little, we're told it's not okay to be angry or, that we need to not be angry because we need to just understand the situation or come to terms with it, right? But I'm a big believer that if we don't let emotions out, especially anger and finding it a healthy way to channel it, then it will cause a lot of um, dis-ease in the body, in our mental state, in our emotions, especially within our heart, right? And even for me going into some personal stuff, like I've been, I had a breakthrough with why I was getting such intense migraines and that I'm holding or was holding a lot of anger and sorrow and grief in my shoulders and my neck, in my heart that was cutting off my blood flow because I didn't have the space to feel safe enough to let it out because it's been a couple of years of this processing of grief and anger, right? So it's always new things to learn, new ways of taking care of ourselves, right? It's fine, the great serving. Even hearing how our emotions serve us and yet how we can be um, not ruled by our emotions, but also connected to them, if that makes sense. Where is the card? There it is, 72. All right. Mars energy. <laughs> this is a shadow card. <laughs> More shadow, love it. <laughs> One that may feel confrontational. Don't be afraid, it's here to bring to the surface anything that's standing in the way of letting love in. The warning, warring planet of Mars is our constant reminder that it's important to soften, forgive, and find our way back to love. 
There are many things in the human experience that make it difficult for our heart and soul to stay open to the never-ending source of love. We're all wounded by our unconscious wounds inflict wounded and our unconscious wounds inflict wounds on others. If you feel like a never-ending dance, we it can oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's start again with that. It can feel like a never-ending dance we can never escape. If we aren't careful, before long we'll see the world as a scare, scary, dangerous place where fear and anxiety roam free. If this card surfaces, it's, it could be to, for two reasons. Firstly, for you to acknowledge the difficult emotions, situations, conflicts, wounds, and fears that, you are, ca that are causing you pain and anxiety. And secondly, for you to find your way back to love. When we're hurt, it's normal to close off our hearts to the world, to let the painful experience confirm the agony of separation in earthly life, soften and find your way back to love anyway. When fear, anxiety, and paranoia paralyze you, it's normal to want to hide away from others in the world. Come out of your cave and soften your heart anyway. We are all in innocent children spinning our way around the world. Find a way to see the innocence in all people, especially yourself. And the inquiry of this card is, how are you cutting yourself off from love? How can you soften towards those who have hurt you? Whew. And it's funny, I chose to wear black today. I'm talking about the shadow self. Ah, oh, man. So I really resonate with this card, especially the last two years where so much has come to the surface with the collective, with ourselves, um, whatever perspective you have, your truth is your truth. And I think sometimes, at least through these last two years I'm hearing specifically, we can get swept up in um, the contrast and duality. But yet again, that fear, paranoia is something that we can alchemize, we can love about ourselves because we're human, right? We all have every emotion. Even the most enlightened beings still felt fear or whatever, right? So I'm hearing specifically, if you can even do the smallest thing for yourself, if you're feeling connected to your shadow or contrast of your shadow, a lot of fear, anxiety, paranoia, anger, if you can take at least a minute or five minutes today, maybe in this moment, maybe when you feel fear, anger, anxiety, maybe depression, really sadness, and breathe into your body. Breathe into those places, breathe into your heart. Even if you start to cry or yell, allow the emotion out and just breathe, sending love to it. That can hold so much power for ourselves when we're feeling anxiety. And I'm hearing too, if breathing is hard for you, if you get into a really anxious place, having music like a playlist already made that helps calm you doing little things to kind of prepare for when you're in a state where it's hard to comfort or hard to see beyond what you're feeling what you're thinking maybe creating these little things like going to connect with your animals if you have an animal or connecting outside if you can go to the beach and watch the waves like little little things to help reconnect you back to the feeling of your pure heart and knowing that we're also not here to fix anything, not even ourselves, right? We're here to remember harmony, joy, peace. That's a big thing for me. I am very, very sensitive and I know a lot of you are. So sometimes it's almost like a kick in the gut of like, why are you worrying so much? I'm even getting emotional right now. So. You know, it's we're not here to save the world in this way of carrying that weight on our shoulders or being worried. And I think that's also in this time we are um, we can get distracted from our our true higher frequency of 
grounded purpose, if that makes sense. And maybe your purpose is very much connected to bringing in codes, bringing in light. And I've had to reframe that for myself as a way of like, I'm not responsible for any dualistic energy. It's a part of my reality, yes, but I don't need to feel the guilt, the shame in that way that totally can sometimes demolish my heart or wall up my heart and not be open. It's a weird balance and I'm not perfect. <laughs> None of us are, right? So the compassion is so much needed. Even getting anger out, like I really connect with getting anger out by either ripping paper, um, taking a pillow and hitting it on my couch. <laughs> hopefully not hitting anything else that breaks, right? But doing it in a way that is literally getting the anger out of our body um, is so important. Ooh, those flew out. Just want one more. This one, okay. Mm. All right, so in connection to the great serving, and I'm hearing within that name alone, that's also maybe, and I just looked at the time and it was 11.11 for the recording. <laughs> um, the great serving, when we can recognize that yes, we're here to share ourselves, our frequency with the world, and that holds a great importance. When we serve ourselves in the sense of taking care of how we feel and witnessing when we feel anger or anxiety and noticing that that also isn't serving us because then it isn't serving the world. We can feel that emotion and then let it pass and come back into a state of grounded awareness, I'm hearing, if that resonates for you. So the cards that came out from Sovereign Vibrations, oh, wow. <laughs> so I'm gonna start with this card first. We get Unwavering Truth. And I don't know if you guys can see, but there's codes, light language codes that came through in here. And the affirmation that comes with this is, I hold all the divine connections to my soul's unlimited potential. My actions are connected to my soul's truth. It is woven in the cosmic fabric of the quantum field. Again, unwavering truth. So I'm hearing too, if when we get in our shadow, when our shadow comes up, when we feel density, reminding ourselves that we have a truth, our essence of our soul never goes away, even if we feel disconnected from it. So if you feel guided to connect with this card, I hold all of the divine connections to my soul's unlimited potential. My actions are connected to my soul's truth. It is woven in the cosmic fabric of the quantum field. And within this card, we then get divine integration and divine guidance. So those times when we feel our shadow takes us down or consumes us, there's a divine purpose because we're integrating our shadow, right? When we can release this part that we've been suppressing, we also integrate it through the power of allowing ourselves to feel, to express and feel safe with our every aspect of emotion. And we have the guidance to then know how to navigate it. So we get divine guidance first, let's say. This came out with a reading this week as well. My soul is in alignment to receiving downloads and guidance from divine source energy. I follow the direction of my intuition. My soul is in alignment to receive downloads and guidance from divine source energy. I follow the direction of my intuition. And sometimes, at least for me, in certain aspects of my journey, when I go to the darkest place sometimes is also when I get the biggest amount of clarity. So it seems very paradoxical, but then we need divine integration. I love this card too. And when it came through, it's very much like a compass, this divine integration. And the affirmation is, I am open and receptive to releasing the old and allowing for deeper reconnection to love. And how beautiful, because they talk about, we need to reconnect to love, right? Integrating it. 
Because if we keep our shadow selves disconnected from ourselves, then that's still a disconnection of love. Because we're still unconditionally loved even if we're angry or depressed. That well-being or divine connection is never severed. It may feel like it, but it isn't. So again, divine integration. I am open and receptive to releasing the old and allowing for deeper reconnection to love. Wow. And I actually feel a lot of codes coming through right now, so I think I'll, I'll do a, a light language um, channel transmission. But yeah, I hope that helps you guys if you're feeling a lot of density right now. You're not alone. Reach out if you feel guided. Know that you have unwavering truth of who you are, even if it may get confusing. You have guidance coming to you, even listening to how to take care of yourself, eating something that maybe you haven't eaten, like vegetables, maybe having more water. And then divine integration. It's an ebb and flow of our journey, right? All right. Yeah. Talk to you guys later. Bye. Sending you all so much peace.